In this course, you will learn how to build a powerful CRM application using Django, Python, and MySQL. You will also learn how to use version control with Git and GitHub and how to configure MySQL for your application. John Elder teaches this course. He is an experienced instructor who has created many popular courses. What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodyMe.com and in this video, we're gonna create a basic CRM app with Django and Python. All right, guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to build this basic CRM app with Django and Python. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com, where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. All right, guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to build this basic CRM tool with Django and Python CRM, customer relationship manager management. You know what I'm talking about. This will allow us to add customer records, see John Elder, address, city, state, zip code, date created, anything else you want, phone number, whatever, and then add it to the database. We can click on one of these guys and we can see the record. We can update the record if we want. So John two, update this record, boom, John two Elder. If we want to, we can update the record back. There we go. Uh, we can come down here. Maybe we don't want a, a record anymore. We can delete it. Record is deleted successfully. We've got this nice table. When you hover over it, it sort of changes color. So you can sort of play around with it. And it's very cool. We can log in and log out. So we can also register. So you can create accounts, log in. Let's see, I'm as admin here. And then here we go. So that's what we're going to be building in this video. This should be a complete video. I'm going to start at the beginning, go all the way through it. And this should be a lot of fun. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm using the sublime text editor and the Git bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below. So check that out if you're interested. So I've just got a basic Git bash terminal opened up and uh, you can see I'm just in my default directory. So let's create a directory where we're going to hold all of this stuff. So I'm going to say MKDIR. I want to put it in my C drive and I'm just going to call this uh, Django CRM, DCRM, whatever. So now we need to move into that directory. So CD DCRM. And when we do, when we type in LS to list the stuff here, there's nothing in there. So, all right, that looks good. Now I should mention before we get started, I'm going to be using a MySQL database for this one, just because I get a lot of requests for MySQL and Django. And I don't really understand when that happens because the point of Django is that it abstracts away the database layer. So it doesn't matter what database you use. You can use any database. It's irrelevant. You're not going to be doing like MySQL commands in this. You're just going to be doing regular Django database coding. But I keep getting questions about the MySQL database. So that's what we're going to use in this video. You could swap this out for Postgres. Most people will use Postgres because when you push this online, Postgres is the most popular and easy to use database with Django and everything else. But you can use MySQL too. It just takes a few extra steps to get it going. So we're going to be using MySQL at this one just to mix things up a little bit and it should be fun. But like I said, if you want to use Postgres, it's very simple to swap out Postgres instead. It's just basically a couple of settings that you need to configure. So no big deal. So, all right, let's head back over here and let's first create a virtual environment. We always create a virtual environment. So I'm going to go Python dash M V E N V and let's call our virtual environment vert short for virtual hit enter. This should spin right up. All right, so now when we hit LS, we can see there's a vert directory. So let's turn this on. Let's go source vert scripts activate. So now we see this vert here so that we know the virtual environment has been turned on. So, all right, let's pip install Django. It's the first thing we need. All right, we're good there. Now we also want to pip install MySQL. Now we're also going to have to actually download MySQL onto your computer from their website. We'll look at that in just a second. Um, but uh, we'll need to do that. Next, we need a connector to connect our Django app to our MySQL app. So there's a couple of them. So you can pip install MySQL-connector. That's the original one. Go ahead and try that and you may be fine, but more likely than not, you're going to have to install pip install MySQLConnector-Python. So I know I probably need that, uh, but if, for good measures, you can install the regular one as well. If one of them works, the other one won't be needed and vice versa. So, okay, we're good there. Okay, so now we need to download and install MySQL. So I'll put a link somewhere to this. Let's head over to a web browser and just head over to this website, dev.mysql.com forward slash downloads forward slash installer. And we want the MySQL installer for the community version, right? And it's 437 megabytes. Go ahead and click here to download. Now I'm not going to do this because I've already downloaded 
And it's a little bit tedious process. You have to click next a bunch of times and it installs a bunch of stuff. It takes like five or 10 minutes to install this thing. The important thing here is when you install it, it will ask you to set up a username and a password. And root is probably the username you're gonna to wanna to set up. It may default to root, but if it doesn't type in root for the username and for your password, pick whatever you want, but remember that password because we're gonna need it to connect to the database later on in our Django app. So I think mine is just password one, two, three. So whatever, for the purpose of this, that's fine, but you know, pick a good password. Now, once you install it, you'll need to turn it on. There's probably an option that says at the very end, you know, start MySQL, click yes. It needs to be running sort of in the background. You won't notice that it runs in the background of Windows. So just make sure that's turned on. So, okay, let's now head back over to our terminal. All right, so let's head back over to our terminal. I'm still in my CDCRM directory. Our virtual environment is still there. It's still turned on. Let's go ahead and create our project. So let's go Django dash admin start project. And I'm just going to name this DCRM. So now we see this DCRM directory. So now I'm going to change directory into it. So, so CD change directory into DCRM and we can see here's our manage.py file. So that's cool. So now we need to create an app inside of our project. So let's go Python manage.py start app and let's name this website because basically this is a website. So I'm just going to call it website. So now when we LS, we could see there's that directory. So, okay, we've got our stuff. Now let's head over to sublime text and add all this in come up to project, add folder to project, navigate to your C drive, and then find that DCRM directory, double click it, go inside of it, click the second one just once to highlight it, click select folder and boom, there we go. So the first thing we need to do is make some changes to our settings.py file. So I'm going to get rid of our comments here and let's come down here to installed apps. We need to add our app. So we call that website, there we go. Now we need to come down here and configure our database section because by default, Django uses SQLite 3, but we want to use, like I said, MySQL for this one. So we need to make some changes. The Django DB backends should be pointed to MySQL now, and we can get rid of this, but we need to add some things. First, we need to add a name. So I don't know what you want to name your database. Let's call it, I don't know, Elder Co, <laughs> something like that, Elder Company, whatever, name it whatever you want. And then now we need to set the user. And this is the user that you set up when you installed MySQL. So it should be root or whatever you set up. Next, we need to designate the password. And again, that's that same password you set up when you installed MySQL. Mine was password one, two, three. Pick something better than that. <laughs> I'm just doing this on my local computer, so it doesn't really matter. Next, we need to set the host. So this is just on a local computer, so it's gonna be a local host. And then finally, we need to set the port. MySQL generally runs on port 3306, and that looks good. You can, I think, maybe change that during installation of MySQL, but you don't want to, just take the default. So, okay, go ahead and save this, and we're good to go there. So now, we need to set up that database that we just designated. Remember, we called it Elder Co., right? We need to create that. So. What I'm gonna do is come back to my terminal and we're in our DCRM slash DCRM directory. It's the same one that has our manage.py file, right? And I'm just gonna create a file using the touch command and let's call this mydb.py. There's lots of different ways you could do this, but this is really kind of the easiest in my mind. So we'll just do that. Head back to our sublime text and you can see there is our file. So really quickly, let me just comment in some things we've done so far. So we want to install MySQL. This is the URL to the installation thing. We want to pip install MySQL. We also need a connector. So either the basic one or more likely this one, whichever one works on your computer, try them both. Maybe try this one to begin with. If it doesn't work, try this one. In my case, I know I, I need this one on my computer. So I just would do that one, but you could try them both. There's no harm in that. So now we need to import MySQL dot connector, right? That's this guy or this guy. They both go by that. And we need to create a database connection. So I'm going to create a variable called database. And this is going to be a mysql.connector.connect. And then inside of here, we need to designate some things. So host is, we know, local host. And then our user, we know, is root. And our password is, now notice this is passwd, password, not password. That's just the convention. 
we know that that is going to be password one, two, three, because I'm very lazy. <laughs> and there we go. So now we want to prepare a cursor object. And this might seem like a lot of work, but it's really not too bad. Just a few more lines of code. So we want a cursor object and we want to set that to database dot cursor. And that database is this thing right here that we just defined, right? We also now need to create the database, right? So we can do that by calling this guy. Let me just paste that in dot execute. And this is just a MySQL command to create a database. We just create database. And what do we want to call it? We want to call it elder co, right? Now we can give a little message here to the terminal if we want all done, something like that and go ahead and save this file. So, we're only going to need this right now one time just to sort of set up this database. And if you know how to set up a database by hand in the terminal, you could do it that way too. Or you could go to the MySQL workbench and do it there. However you want to create your database, you can, but this is super easy. So I'm just going to do it like this. So let's head back over to our terminal here. And if we LS, we see sure enough, there's that file. So let's just run it. So let's go Python mydb.py and boom, it says all done and we should be good to go. Now, if you want to confirm this, you can open up your MySQL workbench. And let's see here. We could come down here to schemas. And when we hit refresh, we see now there's an elder co database in there, right? So, okay, that looks like it worked. So, all right, we're pretty much done with the MySQL stuff. That's the extent of all the MySQL stuff we're going to have to do. Uh, we're pretty much good to go. Now, we can make sure this worked by coming up here clearing the screen and running Python manage.py migrate because by default Django comes with a bunch of database stuff that needs to be pushed into the database with a migration right out of the box. So we could do that now. And if this works, boom, 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 we should be all good to go. Now we can again, confirm this if we want in our MySQL workbench, we can click on tables and you can see now there's a bunch of Django stuff in a table in our elder code database, right? So that looks like it worked and we're good to go. So, all right, that looks good. One last thing I want to do in this sort of area is create a user. So to do that, I'm going to go win PTY and then Python manage.py create super user. Now I'm using the win PTY command because I'm on windows and Git bash and you have to, if you're on a Mac or something else, Linux, you can leave off this win PTY and the command is just Python manage.py create super user. So let's do that. And I want to set the username to admin and we don't need an email address and then set a quick password. Okay, we're good to go. So now let's run our server and see if this all works. So Python manage.py run server. That looks good. Head back over to the browser. And when I hit reload here at localhost 8000, Boom, we get this Django start screen, which means everything worked out and we are good to go. So we have set up our project. Everything is working. We've got a MySQL database installed and connected, and we're ready to start building this thing out. So before we start building this thing out, let's set up version control very quickly with Git and GitHub, just so you guys can check my code as I'm going along if you want to watch that. So to do that, we head back over to the terminal hit control and C at the same time to break out of our server. And now we just need to set up Git. And I've already got an SSH key created on my computer. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, check the channel. There's tons of videos on setting up an SSH key. You need an SSH key to connect to GitHub. I've also got lots of videos on connecting to GitHub for the first time if you don't know how to do that. So I'm just going to run through this as if you already know. So uh, head over very quickly to this web page, codemy.com forward slash Git. These are the commands to set up Git on a project. And I never remember them. I just come to this page and uh, copy and paste them. So this is the first one. We just need to copy each of these and paste them into the terminal real quick. So head back over here, right click paste and enter your name, John Elder. Hit enter, boom, that one's good. The next one is email address. So copy that, head back over here. Right click paste and here's my email address, johnny4196 at gmail.com. I suggest you use the same email address that you use at GitHub. This makes things easier. Next, we have this guy, so copy him. 
And like I said, I don't remember what these commands do. I just know that every time we want to set up git, we need to paste them in. So that's what I do. I've been pasting these commands in for like 20 years. They never change. And I still don't really know or care what they mean. That's just what we do. So head back over here, paste, enter. And the last one, I do remember the last one. It is git init. So there we go here. Boom, boom, git init. Okay, so now we see this master on here. That's the master branch. That means git has been basically uh, installed and it's been turned on. So now we need to put all of our files in there. So let's go git add period, git commit dash am. Let's call this the initial commit. All right, so we've committed it all. Now we need to push it up to GitHub. And in order to do that, we need to go over to GitHub real quick. So go to github.com, log in. So my username is, I think, Flat Planet. No, I don't think the world is flat. I just find it hilarious that some people do. Okay, and then click on repositories. And then let's create a new one. And I'm gonna call this Django CRM. And this will just be public. So we'll click create repository. And then we need to come down here to push existing repository from the command line. And we need to enter these commands into our terminal one at a time. So let's paste this guy in. All righty. Then this one will change the name of our master branch from master to main. That's common now. So you can see now it says main there. And then finally, the last one is just to push all of our code up to GitHub. So we'll grab this guy paste it in and boom, that looks good. So now when we come back here and hit reload, you can see here's all of the code that we have so far. And we can confirm that we can click this DCRM, go to settings. You can see up there, it says website, we made that change. And then we can come down here and see up, here's all the database stuff, elder co root. Now your password is right here, this is open. So if you're doing this professionally, when you set up your repository, you wanna probably set that up as private. Right. So remember, I picked public. Um, but we can let me show you here again, go to repositories, click new, name it. And then right here where it says public, instead, you would click private. So people won't be able to see your code, right. But for our purposes, I don't really care. I don't care that you guys know that my MySQL database is password one, two, three, there's nothing in there, you can't hack it. Well, I suppose you could hack it, but there would be no reason to there's nothing interesting in there. So there you go. So okay, that looks good. So, all right, we're moving right along. So now let's come back here and let's run our server. So Python manage.py run server, head back over to the website, make sure that's working, hit reload. Okay, we're good to go there. So, all right, let's start building this thing out. So let's head over to our code. Now you could delete this mydb.py file. We do not need it at all anymore. I'm gonna leave it in here just so you guys can reference it if you want. If you head back over to github.com forward slash flat pant, planet, and then click on the Django CRM directory. You can see here it is right there. If you want to copy and paste it or whatever, you can do that. So, okay, so let's start to build this thing out. So let's head over to our code and start building this thing out. So I can close out our DCRM folder. We're gonna be working mostly from now on in our website folder here. So Actually, no, we do need to do one thing first in this folder that we didn't do. We need to play around with our urls.py file. So open up this file. And here we need to add include. And we go there. And we need to create a new path. So I'm going to call this two single quotation marks, nothing in between them. And we want to include our website.urls file. Right now we don't have a URLs file in our website directory yet. We need to create that. So I'm just going to copy all this and close this head over here to our website directory, right click new file, and then file save as and let's call this urls.py and paste in that code. Now we don't need this. And we don't really need this include. And we really don't need that. Okay, so let me minimize this DCRM directory. Again, we're not gonna be using that much at all if at all from now on. And okay, so instead of this thing right here, let's create a new homepage. So anytime in Django, when you want to create a web page, it's always a three step process, you create the actual template file, the actual HTML page, you also create a URL and you create a view. So let's start out with creating a URL right here. 
And this is going to be our home page. So we could just, so we just want it to be in root, which is nothing, just two single quotation marks. And we want to point this to views.home, let's call it. And let's give this a name equal to home. Now up here, we need to import our views. So let's go from period import views. Okay, so this is our URL. We're good there. Now let's head over to our views.py file and let's create our homepage view. So let's define home. We want to pass in our request as always. And then here for now, we just want to return render request. And then we want to point this to home.html. Now this doesn't exist yet, but we'll create it in a second. And we want to pass an empty context dictionary. So, okay, that's good there. Now we need to create this home.html file. So let's head over to our website directory right here, right click and create a new folder. And then down here at the bottom, let's name it templates. Now Django knows to look for all web page files in the templates directory. So it will just know to look there. So we can create a new file, file save as, and we want to call this home.html. And for now, I'm just going to say, uh, hello world, just to make sure this is working. Go ahead and save this. Now we can head back over to the website and click reload. And hopefully if that worked, uh oh, we got an error. Cause let's see, no model named website URLs. Ah, let's go ahead and break out of our server, run it again. Now that should work. Just need a little reset there when we made a change there to the settings.py file. And boom, there we go. Hello world. So we've got our first web page. So very cool. Now let's set up the base.html file. And a base.html file is just the file that every web page on your site will reference. And it'll pull like the headers and the footers out of, right? So I'm going to come over to templates, right click new file, file save as we want to call this base.html. And inside of here, we want to put all of the code that's going to go on every page. So the code we're going to use for our styling is something called bootstrap the bootstrap CSS framework. It's the most popular CSS framework. And we can use that for free by going to get bootstrap.com, clicking on the docs, and then just coming down here. And we want the one with CSS and JavaScript. So I'm just going to copy this to clipboard. And then we just want to come back here and right click and paste all of this stuff into our base.html file. And up here at the title, let's change this to Django CRM, something like that. And then here where it says hello world, we need to take this out and add a little tag. And the tag we want to use is a Django tag. And it's the block content tag. Right? So that's the opening block content tag. We also need a closing one. So type in in block here, all one word. And basically what this does is it will pull everything out of our web page. In this case, all we have in there is this stuff. It will Django will basically pull stuff out of there and it will place it inside of this tag, right? but it'll do it behind the scenes. So, okay, that's cool. Now we need to come back over here and make a quick little change. We need to say, hey, use that file, right? So up here at the top, we want to extends base.html, right? And then in this page, we need to wrap everything that we want that base.html file to use inside that same block content tag. So here we can just type that in real quick. So that's block content. And then again, we need to close that tag down here. So end block. Okay, go ahead and save this. Make sure the base.html file has been saved. So now let's head back over to our website and see if that worked. Now notice the text. It's all kind of blocky and dark. If we click reload, uh oh, we get an error. Ah, I didn't put a quotation mark at the end of that. Uh, head back over to our home. Yeah, there we go, right there. <laughs> typos. I'm the master of typos. It's going to happen a lot. All right, so boom, now you see the text is skinnier. It's kind of not as blocky. That means Bootstrap has been installed and we're good to go. So, all right, that looks good. Now this is shoved right up here in the top. We need to change that a little bit. And we can do that by going over to our base.html file and wrapping this whole thing in a Bootstrap div called container, right? Like that, and we need to close our div. There we go. And if you want, you can tab this over to make it look pretty. So now if we save this and head back and hit reload, boom, it bops it over a little bit. You might also want to add a little line break or something. So I'll just add a BR line break tag. Come back over here, hit reload, boom, there we're good to go. So, all right, that looks good. Now let's create a nav bar. So let's head back over to our templates directory, right click and create a new file. File save as, let's call this navbar.html. 
And we're gonna grab that from Bootstrap as well, because it's super easy. Head it back over to Bootstrap, scroll down to Components, and then look for Navbar. Now there's Navbar and Navs and Tabs. You don't want Navs and Tabs, you just want Navbar. So I'll go ahead and click that. And then just come down here and find one that you like. I like this one right here, so we'll go ahead and copy this. And we can head back over to our navbar.html, right click and paste all this in. So let's just go ahead and save this and see what we got right out of the back. Now we need to add this to our base.html file. So we'll come back over here and right under the body tag, let's add another Django tag called include. And here we could just include our navbar.html, close your <laughs> quotation mark there, and that should be it. So let's go ahead and save this, head back over here, and let's hit reload and boom, we've got a nav bar. So, okay, looking good. Now let's modify this nav bar because I don't like light nav bars. So let's go ahead and change that. So let's head back over here and go to our navbar.html. And up here at the very top where it says BG body tertiary, we can get rid of that. And instead let's type in navbar dash dark and BG dash dark. So that will change it from light to dark. So if we come back over here and hit reload, boom, I think that looks much better. So, okay, let's play around with this. Let's navigate, let's uh, modify this bar a little bit more. And we can start with this nav bar guy. Instead of it saying nav bar, let's call Django CRM. And instead of pointing to hashtag, let's point this guy to a URL tag pointing to our homepage. All right, okay. Go ahead and save this and back over here, hit reload. All right, now if I right click and open in a new window, it goes to the home page. right? We can click it forever and it just keeps going to the home page. So that looks good. Right, next, let's get rid of the search thing. I don't think we're going to need that. Uh, come down here to the bottom of our nav bar and see this search come up until, let's see. Yeah, you see, you can click on form and the closing form tag appears. So that's how you know kind of, you know, what to delete. So we just highlight and delete it, save it, come back over here, it reload. All right, that's gone. Next, let's get rid of this disabled link. Same deal, just come back over here and kind of look for the word disabled, there it is. Go up above, click on this LI, the closing LI tag highlights. You can see there's a little line underneath it. So that's, again, how we know what to delete. Save that. And I like to do one little thing at a time to make sure I didn't mess something up. So we've got this drop down thing. We don't need that. So again, let's head back over here. Look for the word drop down. Ah, there it is. And then come up. See, we don't even really need to know HTML. We could just sort of eyeball this. And when I click on this LI, this closing LI tag way down here highlights. So I know all of this can go. Save that. Head back. Reload. All right. And now we've got these links. We are going to need some links up here. So I want to use this one and not this one. I just like the, the look of the sort of more muted one right there. So let's get rid of this home link instead. Again, come back here, look for the word home. There it is. Click on the LI tag right above it. The closing tag highlights. We can get rid of it, save it. Come back over here, boom. All right, we're good to go. So we are moving right along. We've got a functioning website. We've got a home page. We've got a nav bar. Things are starting to come together. Now I think we want to add the ability to register as new users, log in and log out. So I think we'll look at logging in and logging out first, and then we'll do registration. That's a little bit more complicated. There's a little more stuff involved. Logging in and logging out is relatively simple. And that's because we're gonna use the Django authentication system. This comes with Django. It will do all of the heavy lifting for you. It will take care of logging people in, logging people out, keeping track of who's who and what's what. And it just comes with Django and it's really easy to set up and use. So we're going to do that now. So let's head back over to our code and let's close out some of these things just because. So we need to import the Django authentication system into our app. So let's come up here to the top of our views.py file and let's go from Django.contrib.auth, short for authentication. We want to import several things. First, authenticate, then also log in and log out. And while we're at it, we want the ability for Django to flash up little messages on the screen. So like when somebody logs in, we want to flash up a little message that says you have logged in. You know, when it logs, when you log out, we want to flash up a little message that says you've logged out. See ya, whatever. Uh, when we register, we want to flash up a message that says you've been registered successfully, whatever, all that good stuff. So we need to import that too. So let's go from Django.contrib 
we want to import messages, plural. And that looks good. So we've already got a user, we set up a super user. And if we come back over here, we can go to the admin section of Django, and we can log in with that user, right? So we don't need to register that user, we've already got it. So we can log that user in and out. So I'm going to go ahead and log out. But that's why we can do the login and log out stuff before we set up the registration because we've already registered a user. Now, what you're going to want is to be able to register users on the web page, not on the back end, like we did when we set up the super user way back at the beginning of this thing. So we'll build all that out in a, uh, in a little bit. But we're gonna start, like I said, with logging in and logging out. So what we need here is a couple of new views. So I'm going to define login underscore user, I want to pass in the request. And for now, I'm just going to say pass. And we want to define log out underscore user. Again, we want to pass in the request. And if you're not familiar with what a request is, anytime you go to a website, you're requesting that website, you're requesting that web page, that request gets sent back into the back end right here. And we pass it into the view, and then return something in this case, we're returning the home page. So that's what this request is, you see a request a lot in Django. And just think of it as that somebody going to a web page and requesting that web page, right? So that's all that is. So okay, we've got these two new views, we also need URLs, because like I said, it's always a three step process in Django, you need a view, you need the thing, you know, like that, and you need a URL. So let's head over here and create our URLs open our URLs.py file. And I'm just going to copy this and paste it a couple more times. So let's create a login URL. And this is going to point to views dot login underscore user that we just created in our views.py file. And let's name this login. Okay, so that's good. We also want to log out. Right? And this is going to be views dot log out user. It's very complicated, right? Log out user. And we want to give this a name of log out. Now, the reason why I'm calling this log out user instead of just log out is because here we're importing login and log out. And these are basically functions that will run. So our view can't be named login because it will conflict with this login thing. It can't be named log out because it will conflict with log out. So we, you know, get around that by calling it login user instead of just login. So that's why we do that. So all right, head back over here. This looks good. Go ahead and save this. Now head back over to reviews.py file. And I've created this login user function. And if you want to create a separate login page, you need that but I think we're just going to add this to the home page. So what we want to happen is if somebody comes to the home page, if they're not already logged in, we want to flash up a form that says login. If they are logged in, we want that form to disappear. And we just want to show the database like the CRM list of all the records. But we don't want to show those records unless you're logged in. So we will do this all on the home page. So let's head back over here. And we can add all this stuff in our home view. So before we do that, let's add the form to our home.html page just so we can see what we're looking at here, head over to our home.html. So and let's center this form in the middle of the screen. So I'm gonna give this a div with a class equals and this is going to be col md six. And this is just pure bootstrap. And then we also want to give it a space and then give it an offset dash md dash three. And basically, like I said, this is just bootstraps code that says center everything in the middle of the screen. So if we just save this and head back over here and click reload. Well, we got rid of this login view. So we need to modify this very quickly head back over to urls.py file. And we don't actually need that guy anymore. So we can comment him out. And for now, we'll comment this out because we haven't built this out yet. And they'll throw an error. So if we save this head back over here. Now, if we hit reload, we can see boom, hello world is more centered than it was before. And that looks good. So let's head back over here to our home page. And let's start building this thing out. So there's a couple of ways to create forms in Django, you can create a forms.py file, we'll do that later with the registration. You can also just hand code it, we'll do that for this, I want to do both of them in this little video here. So you can see both ways to do it. So here, let's just change this to log in. And let's create a form. And the method we want for a form is post anytime somebody fills it out and clicks the button, it posts that to the server. And then we also want to give this an action of and this is going to be a Django URL. 
and we want to point it to home because we want to send this back to the home page, right? So then down here, we can close our form tag. Anytime you create a form with Django, you also need a CSRF underscore token. That's a cross-site request forgery token. It helps your form from getting hijacked by hackers. So that's just a requirement. Now let's create a form and we're gonna use Bootstrap for this. So I'm gonna head back over to Bootstrap and come up here to forms and click overview. And let's just grab the first one. Doesn't really matter. And we can head back over here and paste it in. And if we save this and head back over to the website and hit reload, we see, okay, that's looking good. It's asking for an email address and a password. And the password has these dots in it, that's good. It also has this check me out thing, we don't need that, so we could get rid of that as well. Also, this is crammed right up here. I wanna put a little space in there, so I think uh, that will be better. So right here, I'm just gonna add a line break. And all right, let's start to modify this thing. So let's come down here and first things first, this button is primary colored blue. I wanna change it to secondary. Uh, so if we save this, come back over here, hit reload, boom, now it's gray. I think that looks better. It says submit, maybe you want it to say log in. Uh, you could just change this to log in. And now let's get rid of this checkbox. So check me out. We click this div, the closing div highlights so we know we can delete all of that. Save it, head back over here. All right, that's gone. The password field is fine, uh, but uh, this needs to be changed from an email address field to a text field. So we can do that. Let's see. First, let's get rid of this label. We don't need the label for the password thing. And get rid of this div. It says we'll never share your email address. We don't need that. And let's also get rid of this label that says email address. And instead of a type of email, this is gonna be a type of text, right? And we have a class of form control, but we don't need an ID. So let's get rid of that. And same thing here with the password field. We don't need the ID thing, so we'll get rid of that. Okay, so these two things do need some things. They need a name. So this one will give it a name of first underscore name. And let's give it some placeholder text. And let's say first name. All right, same thing down here with password. We need to give it a name. So I'm gonna name it, you guessed it, password, All right? And also let's give this some placeholder text. And this is gonna be password. So let's save this, come back over here and hit reload. And oh, that looks much better. We've got this placeholder test text that says first name. When we click it and start typing, that disappears. Uh, here we can still type the password and that looks good. When we click log in, nothing happens because you know we haven't done anything yet. We need these to be required though. So if you don't fill them out, we need a little thing that pops up and says, hey, fill that out. So we could just come over here and then just type in required. Same thing for this guy, required. And Bootstrap will take care of this for us. So now when we hit reload, you don't need to resend this. Uh, if I click login, it says, hey, please fill out this field. So if I enter a name and then click login, it says, hey, please fill out this field. So that looks good. It doesn't actually go anywhere. So uh, maybe we'll give a line break above that button too. So uh, I don't know. I like line breaks. I like to space things out. That's just me. Uh, resend. Okay, so that, I don't know. Maybe that looks better. Whatever, you could also put a line break between these two things if you wanted, whatever. Um, let's see, I'll just do it right here. Save this, reload, eh, whatever, whatever you like. Uh, you can play around with that. So, okay, that looks good, but it doesn't actually do anything. And really, we only wanna show this if the person hasn't already logged in. So. How do we determine if a person has logged in or not? Well, we can come up here to the top and we can say if user dot is underscore authenticated, right? Then let's say H1 hello world, right? Else do all this stuff. And then down here at the bottom, we need to end our if statement. So let's go ahead and save this, come back over here. Now if we hit reload, nothing changes, right? But if I go to the admin section and log in, right? 
now I'm logged in. Now, if I go back to the home page, it just says hello world and that form disappears. So that's pretty cool. That works. Let me go ahead and log out again. Now, when I go back to the home page, it shows the login form again. So, okay, we've got this form. It doesn't do anything yet. So probably need to work on fixing that. So let's head back over here and go to our views.py file. And inside of our home view, let's create some logic. Let's say check to see if logging in. So if a person is logging in, they are posting. Otherwise, they're just going to the web page, in which case they're getting. They're getting the request, right? Other than posting a request. So we want to run some logic. Let's we'll say if request, that's this guy right here, dot method equals post. We want to do something, right? Remember this method here? On our home page, we set this form method to post, right? So we're posting the form whenever we submit it. And in here it's saying, hey, are they, is this request method a post? If so, hey, they're filling out the form. Let's do some form stuff. What do we need to do? Well, let's grab whatever they just submitted. So let's create a variable called username and we can get whatever they typed into the form by calling request.post and then passing in username. Why username? Because on the form, we gave this field a name of oh, first name. We should probably name this instead username. There we go. Yeah, brain freeze. And instead of having the placeholder text say first name, let's have it say username. That looks much better. Save this. Let's head back over here and refresh this. Okay, so now it says username and password. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> right. So add back over to our views.py file. So our username is going to equal username. And then we want our password to equal again, request.post, and then use our little square bra brackets and pass in password. Again, why password? Well, because on our home page here, this password field, we gave it a name of password, right? Right there. So that's what we're looking out for on the back end here, these guys right here. And then we're just gonna assign whatever the person typed into the form into this variable called username. We're also going to assign whatever they whatever they typed in as their password into this password variable. So now we have their username and password. We can run some logic and say, hey, is this a real user? Is their password correct? Should we log them in? And uh, how do we log them in? So let's, um, you know, authenticate. And we do that by calling, uh, I'm just going to create a variable called user. And then this will call the authenticate function which is this guy up here that we imported. And inside of here, we need to pass in our request as always, and then set the username equal to username, which is this guy right here, which is whatever they typed in as their username. And we also need to pass in the password as password, which again is, you know, this variable right here, which is whatever they typed in as their password. So, all right, that's pretty simple there. So now let's run some logic and see, did they type in everything? Does everything look good? Let's go if user is not none, then we wanna log them in, right? So log in, and then we wanna pass in request and user. Now, if everything checks out here, if the username and password is correct, it gets passed in here and they'll be logged in. And let's create a message, right? So let's go message.success. And then as always, we pass in our request. We do that a lot. And let's say you have been logged in. I don't know, that looks good. And then we wanna redirect them somewhere. Well, where do we wanna redirect them? Let's just redirect them to the homepage. So let's go return, redirect, and then home. Now, we don't have the ability to redirect yet. So I'm gonna copy this and come up here to the very top of the screen. And we need to import the redirect function there. So, okay, that looks good. And we're good to go. Now we can create an error message. We could say, hey, if something with, went wrong and they couldn't log in, let's create a message. So actually this should be messages. There we go. So messages dot success. And we wanna pass in our request. And let's say there was an error logging in, please try again, dot, dot, dot. I like the dot, dot, dots. I don't know, that's just me. 
And then I guess we probably send them back home again, right? So, okay, now we still have this guy down here. And the reason why that is, is because this is all set up to work if a user is posting. So if they're posting, process that. Else, we can come back here and we just wanna send them to the homepage. Cause if they're not posting, that means they're just going, they're just getting that page. And in which case we just wanna show them the page. So let's go ahead and save this, head back over here and let's play around with this. First I'll hit reload. And I'm gonna type in just nonsense here and click log in. And we didn't get an error, how come? Well, we actually need to add that to our base.html file. So if we come back here to our base.html file, and underneath our nav bar, but probably still in our container, let's create some logic here. Let's say if messages, so if there are messages, and right away, I'm gonna end our if, because I forget to do that a lot of times otherwise, right? So then inside of here, let's display the message. So let's go for message in messages, so it's plural. And then again, I'm just going to right away end my four. And inside of here, we could just type in the message for now. So let's go ahead and save this and let's see if that worked. So let's type in some nonsense, click this. It says, there was an error logging in, please try again. There's an error logging in, please try again. So this doesn't look great. We wanna format this. So let's head back over to Git Bootstrap and come down here to components and click on alerts. And here's a little alert, looks good. We want one with a little X in it so we can close it. So I'm just gonna keep scrolling down until I find one with an X in it. Oh, there we go. I'm just gonna copy this code, head back over here. And inside of here, I'm just going to paste all of this in, have it over to make it look nice. Okay, now we don't want it to say holy guacamole, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And instead of that, we just want to type in the message, right? That's this for message and messages, type out the message. So, all right, let's go ahead and save this, try this again, head back over here, type in some nonsense. There was an error logging in, please try again. Looking good. Uh, we can now try to log in with our actual username, our admin guy. And it says you've been logged in and now it says hello world. Very cool. And that's all there is to it. We can now log in. Okay, so let's now log out, head back over our code. And the first thing we need to do is head over to our urls.py file and uncomment out this logout thing. I'm gonna leave this guy in here just in case you wanna create a separate login page. If you do, you'll uncomment this out and then you'll just come back over to your views.py file and create a, a, logout, a login user function and basically just put all this code in that function. But we're gonna keep it the way it is and do this all on the homepage. I think it's a little more elegant doing it that way. So, okay, now let's create our logout user function. So this is actually very simple, a lot easier than logging in. And to do that, we just call the logout function and then pass in our request. Now we can do that logout function because up here we imported this logout function that will do all the work for us. So that's all we really need, but we should probably make this look nicer. So let's give this a little message. So let's go messages.success, pass in a request. And let's say, I don't know what, you have been logged out, dot, dot, dot. Love the dot, dot, dots, right? And again, we can just probably redirect to the homepage so I can copy this guy and then paste it in. So, all right, that's all we need. Now we need to probably add a link to this in the nav bar. So let's head over to our nav bar. And here's this link. Now we only want the logout link to appear if a user is logged in. If they're not logged in, we don't want them to be able to log out. They can't log out, they're not logged in, right? So it's actually pretty simple to do. Let's just do some logic here. So let's go if user dot is underscore authenticated. So that means, hey, if they are logged in, then let's allow them to log out, right? Else, if they're not logged in, and let me just very quickly end my if so I don't forget. And I'm gonna copy this link and let's create another link inside of here. 
So if they're not logged in, we want them to be able to log in. All right, so now we need to point these somewhere. So, so we need a Django URL tag and we want this to point to log out. There we go. And let me just copy this guy, come down here. And this one will point to home because if they're not logged in, going to the home page will show the login screen, right? So we want to point them to the home. All right, let's go ahead and save this, head back over to the website and hit reload, see if that worked. And we get a logout link. When we click it, it says you've been logged out and it redirects to the home login screen. And now we get this login link. Uh, we can try some nonsense that doesn't work. Hey, there was an error. That's what we want to see. We still see this login link. If we log in, the login link changes to a log out link and we're logged in and we can log out and we can log in. <laughs> it's good fun. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and log out because now we need to register and registering is a little bit more complicated than logging in and we're actually gonna create a Django form to handle that for us. With logging in, we built the form ourselves by hand and that's fine when it's basic like this, but the registration form is gonna be more complicated because we wanted to be able to do a sort of logic type things. Like if they type in a password that doesn't follow the password rules, you know, your password needs to be so long, it needs to have letters and numbers and special characters. And so we need to be able to account for all of that. We need to be able to ask for a password twice when you're registering. So you enter it once, then you have to enter it a second time to make sure the two match up so that it's, you know, you've written it correctly. So that's all a little bit more complicated than a basic form like this guy right here on the screen. So we're gonna create a Django form for that and uh, it'll take care of it all for us. So there's gonna be a little bit of copying and pasting because it's a lot of code, but I'll give you a link to my GitHub where you can just copy and paste it straight from there and that should be a piece of cake. So let's get started doing that. Okay, so registration, and I should mention before we get going, you may not want to add registration, right? Uh, if you don't want sort of open to the public, then leave this part off. You can always add users by coming into your admin section here, coming over, clicking on users, and then clicking add users, and then manually entering them right here. Pick a username, have a password, boom, you're done. Now you could do that. If you wanna open this sort of company-wide or whatever, and you want people to be able to sign up on their own at the website, then you need to do this next little section. So totally up to you, whatever you're interested in with your project here, uh, but I'll give you both methods here that way and this regular registration method. So let's head over to our code and create a registration page. So let's hit up our urls.py file and I'm just gonna copy this guy. And instead of log out, let's call this register. And it's gonna be views.register underscore user, and let's call this register. So, all right, that looks good. Save that. Head over to our views.py file, and let's define register underscore user. Pass in our request as always. And then let's come up here and grab this guy and paste him in. But instead of home.html, let's call this register.html. And we're good to go there. So I'm gonna copy this and head over to our templates directory, right click and create a new file. File save as and call this register.html. And let's open up our home page and grab this stuff and paste it in. And let's say h1 register just for now. And let's go back to our home page and grab this guy, because why type it when we can copy and paste it? <laughs> okay. All right, so let's save this and add a link to this page in our nav bar. So if a user is authenticated, if they've logged in, we don't want them to be able to register because they've already registered. So this should go in our else block right here. And let's just copy this guy. And let's put it another one in first. And instead of it saying login, let's have it say register. And we want to point this to URL register. All right, go ahead and save this. Head back over to the website and let's see if that worked. We want to log out. When we're logged out, we see there's a register link. We can click on it and go to this page. If we log in, that register link disappears. Okay, and we're good to go. So 
log back out again, head over to our register page, and now we need to build out this page. Now, I mentioned before, we're gonna be creating a Django form for this. We're not gonna be hand coding this. So uh, that would be both easier and harder. So let's come over here to our website directory, right click and create new file, file save as, and we wanna save this as forms.py. And in our forms.py file, we need to import a few things. So let's go from django.contrib, dot auth dot forms we want to import the user creation form and you notice the u the c and the f are all capitalized here and the user creation form does just what it sounds like it creates users right <laughs> it does all the work for us so we also want to go from django dot contrib dot auth dot models we want to import the user model and the user model is what we've been using up until now. It's what allowed us to create our super user, what we've been logging in and logging out with, that admin user. Uh, that all gets saved to the user model, right? And that just comes with Django. It's already set up. We just have to import it. And that should be good enough. So let's create a class. And I'm going to call this sign up form. And this is going to inherit the user creation form. And that's just this thing we just imported, right? So we're saying, hey, use that form, but we want to modify it a little bit, right? So what we want is to grab, let's say people's first name, their last name, their email address. Now you may not want to grab their first name, last name and email address, but I, I suspect you probably do just because it's good stuff to have. And, and this is how you do it. So let's define those things. We want email, we want first underscore name, and we want last underscore name. Now we're also gonna want username and password, but we'll deal with those separately in a minute. So first here, this is gonna be a forms.email field. Now this forms, we don't know what this is, so we need to import it. So from up here, we go from Django, we wanna import forms, and that will allow us to use all these forms. So we've got an email field. We also want a forms car field for this and also a forms.car field for this guy as well. And car field stands for character fields. So characters and a name, letters. Uh, email is just email addresses. It allows Django to do regular email address stuff. Like if you don't type an at symbol, Django will know because it's using this email field and it'll throw up a little error saying, hey, that doesn't look like a real email address. Try again. Things like that, right? So that's cool. Now each of these we're gonna give a label of nothing because we're gonna use placeholder text. So we don't wanna actually text above or below the fields. So we can give that to each of these. Next, we wanna give this a widget of forms.text input. And that'll basically say, hey, the form field that shows up on the screen, that's a text input field. It's just a text box basically, right? And inside of this, we wanna give it adders, attributes, right? And this will allow us to pass different attributes onto the page to style our form. So we're gonna be using Bootstrap to style our forms and Bootstrap requires a class of form control. So we can designate that right here. So let's go class and then a colon. And then we could just type in form dash control. And that's it. Now we also probably wanna pass some placeholder text. So again, we can pass in placeholder right here and then designate whatever our placeholder text should be. And this should just say email address, All right? So, okay, that looks good. So now I'm gonna copy this. And we're gonna paste that again in right here, but we need to modify it a little bit. Before our widget, we need to give this a max underscore length of something. Right, so this looks like a capital L right here. It's not, it's a lowercase L, I promise you. Anytime you see an L that kind of looks swoopy like that in Sublime Text, uh, same thing with this label here, this L there and that L and that L, those are all lowercase Ls. Sublime just does that, it makes it look weird like that. It confuses a lot of people, they think that's a capital L. It's not, it's a lowercase L. Anyway, we wanna give this a max length and I misspelled length. <laughs> length, there we go, of, I don't know, say 100, right? 
a person's first name shouldn't be more than 100 characters long, right? You, should, you could probably make it 50. Doesn't really matter. I'll just leave it like that. Uh, here, again, text input. We also want adders with form control. For the placeholder text here, though, we should probably change this to first name. That looks good. Now I'm going to copy all of this and paste it in again right there. And this one will say last name. Okay, that looks good. So I know this is all kind of scrunched up on the screen. Maybe it's hard to read. I'll give you a link to all of this code uh, in my GitHub repository. You can check that out. After this little section here, we'll push our code uh, up to GitHub so that you can sort of see it if you you know want to copy and paste this stuff or look at it in a web browser. So, okay, that looks good there. Now we also need to give this a class with a meta of, and we need to set the model. So our model is going to be user because we imported that right up here, right? We also need to designate the fields in our form. So they're obviously going to have these three fields. We also want to designate username, password one, and password two. And remember, we need two sets of passwords so that we can compare the two to make sure the user isn't typing a typo or something. It's just a basic security precaution. So here we want to designate a username. We want to designate a first underscore name. We want to designate a last underscore name. We want to designate an email address. And then we want to designate password one and password two. And Django expects password one and password two. So you got to have them both, right? So, okay, that looks good. So we're halfway done now. Now, we need to copy and paste a few more things. And I'm just gonna paste all this code in. And the first thing I wanna do is tab all of this stuff over. Because sometimes when you copy and paste, the tab gets uh, a little out of control. So you wanna make sure these have been all tabbed properly. So you can do it manually, each one like this. And I'm just using the tab button on my keyboard to make sure that everything is tabbed correctly even though it looks like it's tabbed, like it may look like this. See these dots? That means spaces have been used instead of tab. Sometimes that happens when you copy and paste things. It doesn't look like it did here, but I just wanna make sure, so I'm gonna do that. So what do we got here? Well, we are basically doing the exact same thing we did here, but we're doing it down here for our username, our password one, and our password two. And that just allows us to add whatever we want. In this case, our adders, our class of form control, as well as our label of nothing. So if you look through here, you'll see we've got username, class, form control, widget adders, placeholder, right? The label is nothing. And also this help text. The help text is, I mentioned this a little while ago, if you mess up somewhere, if you don't type the right thing in a field, this is the little help text that will pop up and you know says, uh, if we look at here, like the password thing here, it says, hey, your password can't be, uh, let's see, let me pull this back. Your passwords can't be too similar to the other personal information. Your password must contain at least eight, char eight characters. Your password can't be too commonly used password. Your password can't be entirely numeric. And these are just different things that can pop up and Django will pop them up as needed but they have to be designated here just to make them look good using bootstrap, right? So like I said, I'm just gonna leave all this here. You can copy and paste it from my GitHub account. We'll look at that in just a minute. I'll show you where you can find that. I don't wanna type all this stuff out. It would take forever and uh, you don't either. So you're gonna wanna copy and paste this. This stuff here just initializes all of this stuff. It's basic Python class stuff. These are double underscore, so underscore, underscore, right? There's no spaces here or here that messes up people sometime. And you'll notice we're passing in the signup form, which is this guy here. This sort of allows us to take all of this stuff and all of this stuff and kind of mush them together and I'll put them onto the screen. So, okay, I think that looks good. Before we move forward, let me just push all this code to GitHub and uh, point you in the right direction in case you want to copy and paste this stuff, which you probably will. Let's head back over to our terminal, hit control C to break out of the terminal. And let me just add all this stuff to my GitHub repository. So git add period, git commit dash am, and let's just say registration. We've done more than that, but good enough. 
and then get push. All right, now I'm going to turn our server back on so that that's running. Now let's head over to github.com forward slash flat planet. I know I do not think the world is flat. I just find it hilarious that some people do. So that's what my account is. And you can click on this Django CRM link in repositories, or you could just go to github.com forward slash flat planet forward slash Django dash CRM. The capitalization is important. So get that right. And then just click on website. And let's see forms.py. Where is that? Oh, there it is. And here's all that code. So you could just, you know, copy it right out, right click, copy, paste it in, boom, you're good to go. So, okay, that's good. Now we've got all this stuff. We need to sort of put it into the web page. So let's head back over to reviews.py file and we need to import that form that we just created. So let's come up here to the top and let's go from dot forms. We want to import our sign up form. And it's sign up form because on our forms.py file here, we named it sign up form right there. So notice the capitalization, capital S, capital U, capital F. That has to be the exact same right here. So, all right, that looks good. Now we can come down here to our register user view and we can start playing with this. So, like with our login, right? When somebody fills out this thing, they're going to be posting it. So we could just copy that right here. If request.method equals post, then our form is going to equal the sign up form. And we want to pass in the request dot post. So we're basically saying, hey, whatever they filled out in that form, send it over to our sign up form and do something. So what do we want to do? Well, first we need to figure out is what they typed in valid, right? So let's go if form dot is underscore valid. And Django is doing all of this stuff for us behind the scenes. So we really don't even care what most of this stuff is. So if it is, if the form is valid, then we just want to save it. So form dot save. And what is the form? That's this guy right here, which is our signup form. We just want to save it, right? So now that the form has been saved, you know, when somebody fills out a registration form, they usually want to fill out the registration form because they want to use the site. They want to log right in and start using it. So let's log them in right now. So let's uh, uh, authenticate and log in. So let's grab their username and that's going to equal form.cleaned underscore data. And we want to pass in username. This is just, this form.clean data takes whatever they posted on the form and pulls out the username and assigns it to this username variable. We also want their password. So that's going to be form.cleaned underscore data and then password one, right? Because on the form, on the website, it will be password one because let's see, in our forms.py file, that's what it's called there, right? So now once we have their username and password, we can try to authenticate them. So let's go user equals. And again, we want to call authenticate and we want to pass in the username equals username and the password equals password. Why password and not password one? Because we took password one and we assigned it to this variable called password. So that's what gets passed in there. Okay, so once that's been done, we can log them in. So let's log in. We want to pass in the request and we want to pass in that user. So if it was successful, we want to give a messages dot success and we want to pass in the request. And let's say you have successfully registered. Welcome, whatever. And then we want to redirect them somewhere. So let's go return, redirect, and let's send them to the homepage, right? So again, this is if they're filling out the form, if they're posting the form, if they're not posting the form, that means they're just going to the website. So else now we still need that form. So let's set the form equal to our sign up form. You'll notice up here, we passed in the request here. We're not passing in the request because 
they haven't filled out the form, right? They're just going to the page. They want to fill out the form. They haven't done it yet. So we don't have to pass in that post yet, right? So we do need to pass this form onto the page. So we could do that inside of this context dictionary. So we put a quotation marks form colon form. Now notice this has quotation marks. This does not. So this will pass the form into the web page, our register.html page, and then we can do something with it, right? So let's do something with it. So let's head back over to our register.html file and let's add a little line break here. And I'm gonna come back to our home page. Where did that go? There it is. And let's see, I'm gonna grab this guy. So let's come right up here. And before I forget, let's close that div. And you know what, we can also grab this stuff as well. So we'll grab that and we need to close our form tag. We also need a submit button. So uh, let's grab this guy. Go. Oh, it looks like we closed our form tag twice. We don't need that. <laughs> All right. Uh, back over here. Boom. Instead of it saying login, let's have it say register. Okay. And we also don't need that there. What is going on? We don't need two forms. <laughs> Get rid of that on the home page. Okay. And that looks good there. Head back over here. All right. This looks good. So we don't need to point this to the home page. We could just take that out. It, if we leave it out, it will post to itself. So you don't really need that. So that's fine. We need our CSRF token. Now we need to add the actual form. And to do that, we just type form dot as underscore P. So if we save this, head back over here and hit reload, boom, we get this very cool form. Now I'm gonna copy and paste some more code here very quickly that you can find in my GitHub account if you want it. But above this, right below the CSRF token, I can paste in, if there are form errors, then this is a little div with an alert it looks just like if we go over to our base.html file, there we go. This is the same code we grabbed from Bootstrap earlier. It posts the messages up on the screen, right? Uh, back to our register page. It just does that same thing here. And if there are errors, it says your form has errors. And then it loops through here and it puts out whatever error is on the form, right? So uh, that's kind of good to have. So I'll leave that in here. You can copy and paste it from my GitHub if you want or you just leave it out, it doesn't really matter all that much, uh, but we're good to go. So if we come back over here and hit reload, we see we've got this thing. Now, if I click on this, it says, hey, you gotta fill this out. So let's give this a try. So let's create a username. I'm gonna call this uh, John. And uh, this is case sensitive, so you'll have to log in with capital J-O-H-N in the future. So this is gonna be John Elder. My email address is John E4196 at gmail.com. My password is that. And if I click this again, it says, hey, you gotta fill out that field. Now I'm just gonna type in garbage here so these won't match and we get an error because our views, uh, head back to our views.py file and at the, begin at the very end of our registered user, let's copy this and we need to paste it in again. So this will, that should take care of that. Let's save this, head back over here, give this another try. Um, now we get a little pop-up. So I'm gonna type in my password. Let's try this again, gibberish here. Now it says your form has error, two password field, the two password fields don't match. So that is, uh, let's go back to our register.html. That's this thing right here in action. So, all right, that looks like that works. That's pretty cool. So now let's actually register. I'll type in correct passwords here. Click register, boom, you successfully registered, welcome and I can now log out. So let's now try and log in. John, you have been logged in, hello world. Now, if I log out and I go to my dash admin section and I log in as admin and I click on users, I'll see there's John and there's admin. Uh, you'll notice admin is a staff user. He's got a little check mark. John is not. John's just a regular user that signed up on the website. They can't log into this section, this admin section, if they're not a staff user thing. So, okay, very cool. I can log out here, head back over here, and we are good to go. So that is registration. 
And we'll notice if we log in again with, say, John, our register link disappears, our login link disappears. All we have is a link to log out, which is what we want. Or we can go back to the home page, which is again what we want. And we're good to go. So, all right, we are moving right along. I think the only thing left to do now is actually set up the CRM stuff. Up until now, this has just been playing around and getting the website up and running. We want to now actually add in the ability to save and view records, to update them, to look at them, to do all the fun things. And I think it's time to now start doing that. So to set up database stuff, the first thing we need is a model. So let's head over to our models.py file. And this is where we define our model. Now, like I said earlier, it really does not matter what database you use. The code here will always be the same. We're not writing SQL code here. We're not writing Postgres code here. We're not writing SQLite 3 code here or MySQL code here. This is Django code. It's just pure Python that creates a class that will then abstract away and create that code for us on the back end. It will create the MySQL code if you're using MySQL. It will create the Postgres SQL code. Whatever database you're using, it will do it for you behind the scenes. And that's the great thing about using Django. So um, let's just dive in here and define our class. So let's come down here and let's create a class. And what do we want to call this? I'm going to call this record. Now you're going to say we're saving records. Shouldn't it be records? No, Django will pluralize it for us. So I'm going to call it record. Uh, call it anything you want. If it's customers, maybe you would call it customer, whatever. And we want to inherit model dot model. Right. And again, this is a lowercase l. So is this which, you know, looks like capital, but it's lowercase. So now we just define the things we want. So the first thing I want is a created at field. And this is just going to add a little timestamp for us. So to do that, we'll call models dot date time field. And we just want to set auto underscore now underscore add and set that equal to true. So Django will just anytime we create a new record, it will just slap a, a timestamp on there of when it was created uh, just automatically and keep track of that for us if we ever want to know when a record was created. Sort of useful. I always do that for almost every model I ever create because even if you're not going to use it, you might someday want to know when a record was created. And it's just a really easy way to do it automatically. So now let's designate what we want to save. We definitely want to save a first name. We probably want a last name. Let's go address and then city, state, zip code, you know, whatever you want. If you wanted their email, you could do email, I'll leave that off. Um, if you wanted, well, let's, let's put it on. Let's be crazy. Email equals and phone equals. And maybe we'll put these two up higher right after last name, maybe. So we've got a fair amount of stuff here, right? So what do we do now? Well, we need to designate what these are going to be. So this is going to be a models dot car field. And again, that stands for character field. And we want to set the max underscore length to, I don't know, let's, let's say 50, right? So I'm just going to copy this. And again, this is a lowercase L. I know it looks capital, but uh, it's not. So let me just pop all of this stuff in here. Now we could change these max lengths, for instance, maybe your email address might be a little bigger, we'll put that at 100. It really shouldn't be. Uh, a phone number is like area code, three digit code, 10, maybe there's a one. So I mean, I don't know, put that at 15 or something, that should be fine. Your address, I don't know, maybe 100. City, city characters are never longer than 50. State is more like probably what? Yeah, 50, unless you're doing like abbreviations like NV for Nevada, IL for Illinois, but ah, we'll leave it at 50. And the zip code, I don't know, let's put that at 20. Now, some people want to do like number fields for zip codes, but I leave it at car as car field because you're never going to do math on a zip code, even though a zip code is a number. In some countries, zip codes have letters in them too, right? So I don't know, in Canada, I think it's like, 26H597 or something, you know, same thing in Great Britain. A lot of countries use uh, letters in zip codes. So we're going to leave that as car field. So that's pretty much it. Now we can define 
underscore, underscore, str, underscore, underscore, pass in ourself. And then here we can just return what we want to show on the screen if we just access one of these records. So I'm going to create an F string. And inside of here, I'm going to pass self dot first underscore name. And we'll do it again. And we'll go self dot last underscore name. So if you just call one of these records in the admin area or on a web page, it will return the first name and the last name. Right. So that's good. That's a good enough representation for us for now. And uh, that should be good. So go ahead and save this. And this is it. This is all you have to do to create a database model in Django. You don't need to know any SQL. Django will take this and convert it into the SQL. But to do that, we need to make a migration and push that migration into the database. And we did a migration way back at the beginning of this course because Django by default has some database stuff that needs to be pushed into the server, into the database, it migrated into the database. And we did that using the migrate command. Watch back to the beginning of this video to see that again. We need to do that again, but first we need to make a migration. So let's head back over to our terminal and we're getting, oh, we got an error, it looks like here on line four, which, uh, yeah, this should be models.model right here. Because up here at the top, we're importing models. So models.model, .model, save that. That looks good. Always nice to check in with the terminal before we get going. And okay, it looks good now. Now, control C to break out of our server. And let's create a migration. Let's go Python manage.py, make migrations. And this is plural. We're making one migration, but the command is still migrations. Uh, so keep that in mind, hit enter, and boom, it's created a migration. And we can look at this migration if we want. It's 001 underscore initial dot pi, and it's in our migrations folder. So if we head back over here, and here's our migrations folder, if we open it, boom, yeah, sure enough, there it is. Here's our migration. And this is what Django has done. It's taken the stuff from our models.py file, all of this stuff, and it's created a migration. And you'll notice here's our created at first name, last name, email, phone, address, city, state, zip. It's also given us an ID. Now, this is very useful. Django does this automatically as well. It assigns a primary key to each record. So it will take care of all that for us. We don't need to auto increment anything. We don't need to designate something as a primary key. That's what this ID field is. And you'll see kind of tab over here. It's set as a primary key, right? So that's really cool. And that's pretty much it. This is our migration. So now we have this migration, we need to push it into the database into our MySQL database. And we do that on the terminal, we just go Python manage.py migrate which we did this command earlier at the beginning of the video with that initial migration. And boom, it's done. So you could probably look at this in the MySQL workbench. If you want, you can come over here to Elder Co uh, and click refresh. And you'll see website record now exists in our table, right? And if we click on it, we see it has the created at First name, last name, email, phone, address, city, state, and zip code. Very cool. Boom. Done. Right? <laughs> That's all there is to it. So very, very cool. And we can now start using this thing. And to do that, let's head over here to our admin section and log in there just to see. And oh, got to turn the server back on. So Python manage.py run server. Okay. Now, when we head back over here, hit reload, we can log into the admin section and you would expect to see that new records model listed here, but it's not, we have to actually add it. So we could do that really easily. Just come over here. Uh, let me close this migrations folder and we want admin.py. And from here, we just need to import that model that we created. So let's go from dot models import record, right? And that's because our models.py file, we called that record, right? So from dot models, models.py, import this record, right? There we go. And then we need to register this on the admin section of the site. So we just go admin dot site dot register and pass in that record. Save this, head back over to the website, hit reload and boom, now our records pops up and you'll notice it's records. It's pluralized it like I said it would. 
And so if you named it records when you created the model, it would be records with two S's, right? Which is weird, but that's why we only put it as record in the model when we created it. So we can click on this guy and you can see there's no records. Right now, I just wanna manually add a couple so we have something to work with. Pretty soon here, we'll create a form on the website where you can add them there. But for now, I'm just gonna create a couple. So let's say first name, John Elder. Let's say John at elder.com, that's not real. One on one, two, 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 three, 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 three. My address is 10 West Elder Street, uh, Las Vegas. Nevada, 89137. We can click save and boom, there it is. So if we go back to this main thing, click on records again, there's John Elder. Very cool. So let's add another one. Just We'll just add two for good measure. And this is gonna be Mary Smith. Her name, her email is mary at smith.com. Her phone is 677 uh, whatever. Her address is uh, 27 Mary Way, right? In Chicago, Illinois, 6610, whatever, fake data. And there's Mary Smith. So very cool. Now we wanna be able to view these things from the website. So let's head back over to the website. I'm still logged in as admin, and we want these to show up on the home page when a person is logged in. We don't want this stuff to show up if they're not logged in, but if they are, we wanna show up there. So let's head over to our code and start to build this all out. So let's go to our views.py file and let's play around in our home view right here. So let's, well, first we need to import that model up here at the top. So let's go from dot models. We wanna import record, right? So right at the top of our home view, let's grab all of the records that are in the table right now. So I'm gonna create a variable called records, and this is gonna be a record dot objects dot all. So this will just grab everything in the table and assign it to this records variable. Now we can pass that in to our web page, right? So let me copy this and let's come down here this stuff is still, if a user is posting, we don't wanna mess with that. But if they're not posting the form to log in, it means they've already logged in and we wanna view the page. So here we'll just pass in records, colon records. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And now let's head over to our home.html file. Where did that go? There it is. And we've already got this set up to where if they're authenticated, we wanna say, hello world. Instead of that, let's say uh, records for now. We'll probably get rid of that, but for now, let's just say that. And let's run some logic. So let's go if records, if there are records, we wanna do something. And right away, I wanna end my if so I don't forget. Now, what do we wanna do? Well, we likely have lots of records. We're pulling everything out of the database. There's probably more than one, right? We would expect. so. Let's loop through them all and put them on the screen. So let's say for record in records. And again, right away, I'm gonna end my four because if I don't, I'll forget. Now, where is this records coming from? Well, that's just this thing right here that we passed onto the screen, which is actually this thing, which is all of the records from the database table right, that we just created from our model. So, okay, so for record in records, let's just print out the record. And we can give a little line break here between each one. And okay, so let's, let's see what this looks like. So let's hit reload and we see John Elder and Mary Smith. Why is it only putting John Elder and Mary Smith? Where's the rest of the stuff? Well, you'll remember right back here where we defined our model, that's this stuff right here. We've told it only to return first name and last name if we just call the record. So if we call the record, it's gonna return first name and last name. All the rest of the stuff is in there. It's all packed in there. We just have to pull it out explicitly if we want, which is what you wanna do, right? You don't wanna spew out everything like this. So to grab each specific item, we would call record dot whatever. So record dot, first underscore name. And 
let me just come through here and make a few of these. So this would be record dot last name. And I'm just going to paste a bunch of them in here and just look at our model. These are the things. So next is email. Let me close some of these. So this will be record email. Then we want phone probably, and you could put these in any order, but I'm just going to go through and put them in the order. We have them here. Uh, let's see, this is going to be address. Then city This is very exciting work. <laughs> copy paste, copy paste city state. And finally, zip code. We could also do, let's see, what else we have? We also have created at. We can output that if you're curious to see what that is. We also have an ID because Django automatically creates an ID. So let's go ahead and save this and see now I put these on multiple lines, but in reality, the HTML is going to print it all out on one line. And we see, sure enough, there it is, John Elder. John at elder.com, one, one, blah, 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 blah. Mary Smith, same deal. So this is hard to read, even with a couple extra line breaks here. Still hard to read. What we really want here is a table that, you know, looks nice and we can click on and do things. So let's look at that. And to do that, we're going to head back over to Bootstrap. And Bootstrap has something called tables. And I'm just going to search for table. There it is. It's in the content section. So click on tables. And here are all the different table options. So to create a table in Bootstrap, we just need to copy this stuff. So I'm going to copy. Let's see. Actually, let's grab all of this. So we want the table. We want the head, which is this first row. And each of these things are each of these columns. And then we want a table body and a TR. So that looks good. We're gonna have to tinker with this. So let's go right here and paste all this in. There we go. Uh, we also need to close all those things. So let's come down here to the bottom and grab those closing tags. And we'll just paste all that in. Okay. Maybe tab that over. So this is our table head. And so the first thing is going to be name. And we'll smush the first and last name together for one name. Uh, then after that, it's going to be email, then phone, then address. And we're going to need a few of these. So after address is city then state, then zip code. Then we probably want the created at maybe, and then ID. So let's save this and just refresh to see if that looks okay. And we're getting smushed in here. So we'll, we'll have to play around with this a little bit. For instance, I guess we don't really need this offset centered thing. So I'll take it. I'll take that out and that out. So now, okay, stretching all across that looks better. The name, email, phone, address, city, state, zip code, created at an ID. All right. And I think we could take rid of it. I think we could take out that records thing for now. It's just annoying. Okay, so now we need to put all of this stuff inside this table. So I'm just going to grab all of this, copy it and paste it right in there. And this TR, I'm going to copy this. It stands for table row. So that will go here. Have all that over. And then let's close the table row so we can get rid of that one there. So for each record, it will loop through here and create a new row a table row with each of these things. Now the actual columns, we designate those with TD tags and closing TD tags. So again, I mentioned we want 
a first name and last name in the same column, right? I think that makes sense. And then for the rest of these, we just give them a TD. So I'm gonna copy and paste like that very quick. And then same thing here, we want to close our TD tag. So let me just sort of paste this in. That's pretty fast. I got skills. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and refresh and see if that all matches up. And okay, looks like it does. Name, John Elder. Notice how we put both the first name and the last name in the name category. You could have a category, you could have a column for first and a column for last name if you want. I don't know, I think this looks better. Uh, name, email, phone, address. I'm just checking to make sure everything lines up. It looks like it does. Okay, so we're good to go. So now, we want to modify this because this does not look great, right? <laughs> so uh, Bootstrap has all kinds of cool things you could do. So just come through here and look and see what you like. Now, striped rows, I like that. That looks pretty good. So to add that, we just add this table striped class to our, our main table class. So if we come back up here and go to the top, here's our main table class. We just inside these quotes, add table striped. Save this, add back over here, hit reload. And okay, now they're striped. We only have two records, so there's only two stripes, but you can imagine it looks better. Uh, what else we got? Uh, let's come through here. Different types of stripe. Uh, hoverable, so when, when you go over, it's, it hovers. I think that's cool. Let's do it up. So we just copy this table dash hover. And again, we just paste it into the same spot. We give a little space there and paste it in. Space and paste, all right? So let's come back over here, hit reload. Now when we hover, it changes color, very cool. What else we got here? Active tables, no, we don't need that. Uh, what else? Table borders, I like borders because otherwise it looks incomplete to me. So let's add a border. Uh, again, space and paste. Oh, I'm gonna run that into the ground. Catchphrase. <laughs> All right, so now we've got that. Okay, that looks better. What else? We could make it into a small table, right? Giving it a table SM command. I don't know that I want to do that, but let's take a look. Space and paste. <laughs> uh, I'm easily amused if you didn't figure that out. So if we hit reload, boom, it just scrunched together. I do not like how that looks. So we're going to take that out. Save that, come back over here, hit reload, much better. I like space, space is good. Uh, you can have dividers, meh, vertical alignment, whatever you like, play around with all this stuff. We can change the color of the head to dark, I like that. To do that, we give, a, we give our table head tag this class. So let's copy this and find our table head tag. And there it is. So space and paste, save it, head back over here, reload. And yeah, I like that, that looks good. And now we're moving right along. So yeah, that was pretty easy. So now we need a, a few different things, right? We need the ability to add a record on the web page. We also need a, and the ability to click on one of these and go somewhere and view the record on its own. We could do that. We also want to edit those records probably when we click on them and view them as their own, on their own. So we need to do all of those things. So that is up next. So yeah, let's make this ID clickable. So when we click on it, you could do the same thing for the first name if you want to have it clickable. And then let's go to a separate web page where we can view just that record, right? So. Let's head back over to our code, hit our urls.py file. We need a URL for that. So I'm just gonna copy this last guy here and let's call this record because we wanna look at specific records. And now we wanna pass something. We wanna pass an integer as a primary key, right? And you'll see what this is in just a second. We wanna point this to views dot, let's call this, I don't know, customer underscore record. And let's point this to record. Go ahead and save that. Now head back over to reviews.py and let's come down here and let's define customer underscore record. We wanna pass in the request. 
we also want to pass in that primary key. What primary key? Well, if we go back to our urls.py file, that's this thing right here, right? So this will essentially look like, uh, you know, local host colon 8,000 forward slash record forward slash two, right? And the reason why is because that two will be the primary key that will pass into the view. It'll come in here, and then we'll take that two or whatever, and we'll pump it into the database and say, hey, return record number two, right? So we know, for instance, that Mary Smith is two, and then Django will return Mary Smith's record. So that's just a very quick and easy and normal way to look up specific records from a web page. So let's head back over here and let's build this guy out. So we probably don't want everybody in the world viewing these records. You, we probably only want you to be able to see them if you're logged in. So we can check right here if you're logged in or not. So we could go if request dot user dot is underscore authenticated. Then let's look up that record. So look up record. How do we do that? Well, I'm gonna create a variable called customer underscore record. And we're gonna set that equal to record dot objects dot get. And we want the ID to equal PK, which is that number that got passed in with our request, right? And the ID of course is the ID from our migration this guy, right? It's our primary key, right? They're unique. Everybody's record has a unique primary key. So you'll notice this lookup thing here. If we come back here to our home page, we, we looked up record.objects.all to get all of the objects. To get a single object, we call record.objects.get and then pass in the ID that we want to get. And then it will take that record and assign it to this variable that we can then pass on to the web page and view on the web page in the same manner we've done other things like that, like here and here. All right. So let me grab this guy and just copy it and paste it underneath here. Instead of going to register.html, we want to probably go to what? Record.html. And instead of passing form, we want to pass the customer record. So boom. And boom. Okay. Now, that's if the user is authenticated. If they're not, then let's create a little message. And I'm just going to come up here to one of these other messages and copy them, paste them in. Make sure the tab correct, they're tabbed correctly. And let's throw up a little message that says, you must be logged in to view that page, dot, dot, dot. And then we'll redirect them to the home page. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. Now we need a record.html page. So I'm gonna copy this. Remember Django is always a three-step process when you're creating something. You need a URL, you need a view, and you need the page. So this is the view, we already did the URL. Now we just need the page. Head over to templates, right-click new file, file save as, and we wanna save this as record.html or record.html. And then let's grab our, maybe our register page. And I just wanna copy these things here. Very quickly, our block tags. And here, let's just say uh, customer record for now. We'll change this in a second. I just wanna make sure this works for now. And there we go. So let's give this a try. So let's head back over here and let's go to record slash one. And what we do is it says customer record, good. Now, if we're logged out and we go to record slash one, it says you must be logged into the view of this page and it sends us back to the home page. All right, so let's log in here. Now we want to make these clickable with a link. So how do we do that? So let's head back over here to our home. And I've noticed that the login screen was different. So let's go back to our register page and let's grab this div. We took it off a bit ago. So this entire table would fit, but down here in the login, we probably want to put it back. So let's save this. 
Now let's just test that real quick. Log out. Okay, now it's centered again. But likewise, this one is allowed to stretch out. So, okay, that's what we want. So now let's add these links right here. So head back over to the homepage. And for the ID, you could do it, like I said, on the first name, last name, but I'm gonna do it just for the ID. The process is the same. Let's go H href equals like that. And then we wanna close our, H, our A tag. And then here we create a Django link URL tag. And we wanna pass this to record, but we also wanna pass in the record.id. So if we save this, head back over here, hit reload. Now we have these links. If you hover though, so look down here in the corner, down in the bottom left-hand corner, it says record forward slash one. If I go to this one, it says record forward slash two. That's what this thing here does. It puts the ID, which we know is this guy right here, into this link. So, okay, let's go try that. Uh, let me reload it again and let's click on this and boom, customer record. All right, now it goes to record slash one and record slash two, but there's nothing showing up on those pages right now. So we need to change that. So back to our views.py file. And let's see, here is where we're passing in the customer record. We have the customer record. We can access it on the page. So let's copy this and let's head back over to our record.html. And here I can just pop in the customer record. So if I save this, head back over here, hit reload, we get Mary Smith. Come back again, click one, we get John Elder. Now again, it's the same deal. It's, it's putting out the default thing. We can break it down into, into everything in the record if we want. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go back over to our home page, and we're gonna do some copying and pasting here because we want all of this stuff. So let's go back to our records page. And instead of that, let's pop this in. Um, we need it. We could take out all of these things very quickly here. Just da 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 da. I'm not as fast as deleting as I am as copying and pasting. Very exciting work here. Okay, so again, we probably want little spaces here because this is all gonna be on one line until we fix it. We don't want a URL here, so we'll take out this link as well. Okay, so let's just save this and see what we got here. Hit reload. Oh, everything has gone wonky. Ah, this should be customer underscore record, obviously. So let me just paste, 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 and paste. Okay, save this, head back over here. Now that should work. And boom, we get all of John Elder's stuff scrunched onto the screen. So, all right, that's not great. We need to want to format this a little bit. So let me just move this over, make it look nicer. And we can start out by adding some line breaks. So let me copy this. There we go, save this, head back over here. All right, that's looking a little bit better. Not a whole lot better, but uh, let's see. We're missing a first name and last name here. Oh, I forgot to add this. This is what happens when you copy and paste. All right, let me, there we go, that's easier to read. So now, all right, so, Okay, that's not great. Let's make this look nicer. So let's head back over to Bootstrap. We always go to Bootstrap when we wanna make things look nicer and head down to Components and let's grab a card. So I'm just gonna scroll through here until something catches my eye. And, um, oh, this looks good. Let's grab this. So I'm gonna copy this, head back over here and let's get rid of customer records and let's paste in this card. So if we save this, Head back over here and just look and see what we have. We got this nice looking card. That looks pretty good. 
where it says featured, let's put the name, all right? I think that'll look professional. So I can just get rid of this BR and copy this first and last name. And let's just, boom, pop them right in there. So let's save this, head back over here, see how that looks. Yeah, it says John Elder there, very cool. Let's get rid of this button here, we don't need that. So that's this guy right here. Get rid of that, save it, reload it. All right, that looks better. And then maybe right here where it's a special title treatment, that's where we'll put everything else and we'll get rid of this one here. So uh, that would be this. Otherwise it's gonna be card title H5 for everything in our list here. So eh, maybe we want that, maybe we don't. For now, let me get rid of all of these BRs. There we go. And we could just copy all of this stuff. Control C to copy or right click and copy. And right here, I'm just gonna paste all these things in. So I'm a little, I'm a little torn. We could do like this for each one of these. So like that, you know, on and on. Let's save this and see what this looks like. All right, so if the size of the text is what you want, I don't really like that size of that text. So let's change this out. Instead of using the card title H1, let's use this P uh, class card text. I think that probably will be better. So let me just copy this. And here, we'll just do it like this. We'll get rid of this and this and all of these things. All right. And instead of H5 tag, this will be a closing P tag. Now, actually we do now need all of those line breaks that we deleted. So I don't know, play around with this, make it look however you want. I'm bad at design stuff, uh, but uh, that should work. Let's take a look at this. And, and we don't need the John Elder because it's already there. So let's see, we'll take that out. There we go. So maybe that's good enough. Maybe you want to put the email phone city, like the words in front of them, maybe something like that. So let's go strong, strong. Let me copy this for each of these guys. And inside of here, maybe we type in like email and then phone. And <laughs> this is becoming unruly address. So you probably want to put some spaces around here. So city, <laughs> right? State, zip code. And created at, and finally, ID, something like that. Again, this is getting to be ridiculously hard to read. So I'm going to put some spaces after the BRs. So at least it's a little bit easier to designate what's what here. So, all right, go ahead and save this. Or you could just kind of, let's see, highlight all of this stuff and tab it over a few times. That makes it a little easier to read, whatever, good enough. Let's head back over to the page and hit reload. And ah, there we go like that. I don't know, it still seems a little scrunched together to me. So instead, maybe we do a P tag for each thing. And instead of a BR, let's get rid of those again. We do something like this. Let me save this and reload it and see. Yeah, that puts some space in between each item. Maybe that's what you like. Whatever you like. I think maybe I'll do that real quick here. Just add P 
appease each of these guys and then like that. There we go. Get rid of this one. And this is not very exciting television, is it? <laughs> or YouTube vision. Okay, so save this. We could tinker with this all day. And yeah, that looks good. Whatever. And here, John Elder, maybe you want to make that bold. I don't know. So let's go strong. Strong. I don't know. We're just playing around at this point. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you like, uh, it's totally up to you Something like that. And uh, yeah, looking good. So we might want a back button down here below. So let's go test, save this, make sure we're in the right spot. Yep, there it is. So we definitely want a line break or two there. And we can create a little button here. We can go href equals and this is going to be a Django URL tag. And we want to send it back to what? The home page, probably. Right? And then here we can have it say back. And then inside of here, we can make it a button by giving it a class equals btn uh, space btn dash, let's say secondary, something like that. That will make a gray button. So if we hit reload, we've got this back button. Now when we go to Mary, she's got a back button. Very cool. So, okay. Step one, put the thing on the screen. Step two, maybe we want to delete. So we want a delete button, right? So let's come back over here. Let's grab this guy. And right next to him, let's put a, let's say delete button. And instead of button secondary, let's put button danger. That will make it red and scary. So there we go. Now it says delete. We click delete. It goes back. It doesn't actually delete yet. We're going to have to build that functionality in. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that now. So, all right. What are we doing here? We're doing a thing in Django. Things in Django are always three step processes. You need a URL, you need a view, and you need the thing. In this case, we don't need the thing. We're not sending them to a delete page. We're just doing an action. So we actually only need two things this time, <laughs> but we can start to do that. Head over to urls.py file and let's copy this guy and paste it in and let's create a new path, a new URL. And instead of calling this record, I'm going to call it delete underscore record. Again, we still want to pass this primary key because we need to know which record to delete, right? So that makes sense. And here, instead of customer record, let's call delete record. And for the name again, let's call delete underscore record. So, okay, that looks good. Save that, head back over to reviews.py file, and let's create a new view. So define delete underscore customer, pass in our request. We also want to pass in that primary key so we know which record to delete. Very important. And deleting records is pretty easy, it's sort of like logging out. There's not much to it. So I'm going to create a variable called delete it, right? And this is going to be a record dot objects dot get. Just like when we looked it up earlier, we still just want to pass in the ID of primary key, right? That will get the record that we want to delete. Now we just delete it. So we call delete underscore it dot delete. And that's it. So again, just like earlier, when we're logging in and logging out, we probably want to flash up a little message or something, right? So let's say record deleted successfully dot, dot, dot. And we probably want to send them back to the homepage. Now, anybody can do this. So we probably want to say only do this if the person is logged in, right? So let's grab all of this. Else, let's say, again, you must be logged in to do that thing to do that. I don't know, whatever, and pass them to the homepage. 
All right, let's go ahead and save this and see if that worked. I'd be very, very sad to see Mary Smith go, but in the name of science, uh-oh, we've got a, we've got an error. Hit our terminal. Oh, uh, delete record. I did not save. Ah, we called this delete customer. What did we call it in our URLs.py? Delete record. So that's the problem. Delete record. There we go. Save this. Now, if we head back over here and hit reload, there we go. So like I said, Mary Smith's got to go. Let's click Mary Smith, click delete. And that did not work because we didn't update our button here. So, all right, let's head back over here to our record.html. Come down here to our delete button. And this needs to go to, I've already forgotten again what we've called it, delete record. So the name of this is delete record. Let me copy this, head back over here. And instead of pointing this to the home page, we need to point it to delete record. And again, we need to pass our customer underscore record dot ID. All right, so go ahead and save this. Mary is just sticking around, isn't she? Now, when we hover over here, you see down at the bottom, it says delete underscore record forward slash two. So let's start over. Let's click here. Boom, two. Mary Smith, nice knowing you. Record deleted successfully. Ooh, it says records deleted. Let's change that. So record, there we go. All right, not bad. And that was pretty easy. So, all right, so moving right along, we can see all of our records on the home page. We can click on each individual one, see them individually. That looks decent. And we can delete them or go back. Now, let's add records. So, let's head over to our urls.py file. And I'm going to grab one of these and let's call add underscore record. And this is going to be views dot add underscore record. And here the name we'll call it add underscore record. So that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and let's head back to our views.py file and let's create a new view. So let's define add record. We pass in our request as always. And let's see, let's come up here and grab one of these guys here. Come down here, paste it in. So again, we're going to point this to add underscore record dot HTML. We haven't created that yet. So let's do that. We don't need to pass anything in just yet. We might later. We'll see. Go ahead and save this. Now head over to templates, right click new file, file save as, and we want to save this as add underscore record dot HTML. And again, let's head over to our record page and grab these basic things. And let's say H1 add record. And head back over here again, grab the end block. Paste that in. Okay, that looks good. Now let's add a link to this in the nav bar. So let's head over to our templates slash nav bar. And we probably only want to see this if a user is logged in, right? So that's going to be in our is authenticated block, right? So let's say right here, let's give this a link to add record. And we want to point this to add underscore record. Save it, head back over here, hit reload. Now we have this add record link. When we click it, it goes to this add record page. And uh, yeah, looking good. So, all right, let's build out this add record page. This is getting exciting. So let's head back over here. I'm going to go to my home page and come down here and grab this centering thing that we've been playing with in the past. And let's add a little line break. And let's also go back here and grab our form stuff here. So we'll grab this. And what else we need this closing stuff and a button. So we'll just copy this. As we go along, this gets easier because we can just reuse code that we've already <laughs> played with in the past. So here, let's have it say add record. And instead of pointing it to home, we want to point it to add underscore record. Okay, that looks good. And let's just create a form for this. So let's go form dot as underscore P. And like I said, we're going to create a Django form for this. So all right, that looks good. So now let's head back over here. 
And let's go to our forms.py file and let's build out this form. So here's our sign up form. We could just come down here below it and create add record form. So let's create a class and I'm going to call it add record form. And this is going to inherit forms.model form like that. Now we don't have to import model form because we've already imported forms. So up here we from Django import forms that will allow us to use the model form and a model form is just what it sounds like. It takes a form and adds it to the model. Our model is the record model. So we need to import that. So let's go from dot models. We want to import record. And now we can use that on this page. So let's come down here and build this guy out. So we want a first underscore name. We want a last underscore name. We want, well, basically all the things from our model.py file. So first name, last name, created at. We don't need that because Django does that for us. Uh, but we need email, phone, and address. So let's go email, phone, and address. What else we got? city state zip code. So city state and zip code. We also don't need the ID Django will create that for us. So up here, let's create one. Let's go forms dot car field. It's almost always a car field, right? And we probably want to set required equal to true for all of these because we want info for every one of these. We don't want people to be allowed to leave anything blank, right? So, okay. So like earlier, we need to set a widget and this is going to be a forms dot widgets dot text input. And again, we need our adders curly brackets. And here let's give this a place holder text of first name. And we also want to give this a class of form dash control for the bootstrap of fying, make it look nice with bootstrap. And then outside of here, let's also create a label and set it equal to nothing. Now, again, this is a lowercase L both of these are, I know they look like they're not, but they are. And that looks good. So I'm just going to copy all of this stuff and let's paste it in for each one of these. Okay, but this is going to be last name. This is going to be email. This is going to be, I think, phone. Let's make sure. Yep, that looks good. Address city state zip code. So address city. state and zip code. Okay, that looks good. So I know this is kind of hard to read. Again, you can look at it on my GitHub page if you need to. Now we also need to set our class of meta and designate what model we want to use. So model equals this is going to be our record model. We also can either designate the fields or we could just say exclude and set it equal to our user and a comma, and that will just add all the fields. So that's an easier way to do it. Sometimes you can get away with doing it that way. And in this case we can. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. So we have this add record form. Let's now import that to our views.py file. So up here at the top, we want from forms, import signup form and add record form. So now we can use this in our view. So let's do that Come down here to our, our add record view and let's designate a form. And this is going to be our add record form. And let's go request dot post or none. So this will allow us to say, hey, are they posting the form? Are they adding a record? If not, just go to the web page. So that's a second way to do that. We did it a little bit differently earlier, but I like to show you different ways to do the same things in case something is better suited to whatever you happen to be working on. So let's go if request dot user dot is underscore authenticated. If they're logged in, then let's allow them to post. So let's say, hey, if request 
dot method equals host. Then again, from earlier, we need we know we need to say, hey, is this thing valid? So let's go if form dot is underscore valid. Then what? Well, let's add underscore record equals form dot save. And again, let's messages dot success, pass in our request. And let's say, I don't know, record added, da, 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 whatever. And then let's return redirect to the home page. Right? Otherwise, if they're not posting, then we just want to, well, do this guy. Make sure this lines up with this if statement for the post, right? But we want to pass in the form. So form colon form, because we want that form to show up on the page. If they're not filling out the form, it means they want to fill out the form. So we need to pass the form onto the page, right? All right. Else, so if they're authenticated, do all this stuff. Otherwise, they're not authenticated. So we need to send them a little message. Uh, let's just copy this. Right. And let's just say what you must be logged in, da, 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 whatever. OK, so let's go ahead and save this and that should do it. Let's try this out. So let's go add record and we've got this nice form. Now I'm going to copy this link and let's log out. Now let's go to that page. Ah, You must be logged in. Hey, that works. So let's log us in. Now we can add a record and let's bring Mary Smith back, man. She was, she was something, right? Mary at Mary.com. Mary's phone is 555 666. That's not six. <laughs> she lived at 10 Mary way in Maryville, Illinois with that zip code. All right. Fingers crossed. Add record. Boom. Record added. There she is. And now her ID is three because it's incremental, right? The last one was two, we deleted that. The next one will be three. That's how primary keys work. And we are good to go. So we are moving right along. We can add records, right? We can log out, we can log in. We can register. Now all we need is the ability to update our record. So let's come through here, head back over to our record page. And where did that go right there? And let's grab this. Now let's grab this link here. And let's say what update record. And let's pass this to update underscore record. So now we need to create this guy. All right, so save this head over to our urls.py file. And I'm going to copy this delete guy because you guessed it. We're going to have to pass the primary key again because we need to know which record to update, right? So here, instead of delete record, this will be update record. And this will point to our update record view. And let's call this guy update record. Okay, so save that. Head over to reviews.py file. And let's define update underscore record. We want to pass in a request as always, and also that primary key, because we need to, like I said, look up which record to update. And we only want to allow this if somebody's logged in as always. So I'm just going to copy this guy. And if the request.user. is authenticated, what do we want to do? Well, let's grab our current record, right? And this is just going to be the same thing we've done before. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's just grab this. So this is going to be record.objects.get, the ID of whatever that primary key is, assign that record to this current record, and now we can play with it. So we can use this add record form. So I'm going to just grab this whole thing, copy it, and paste it. Now, what we want is when somebody goes to this page and this form pops up, we want it to be already, what's the word, propagated with whatever 
the record is. And we can do that by just passing right here where it says or none. We could just give this an instance of the current underscore record. And we've defined what that current underscore record is right here. It's the record with the primary key that we passed into the page, right? We've grabbed that record. We can pass it back to the page in an instance of it, just like that. So very, very cool and uh, actually pretty simple. So now we've done, hey, are they posting or are they doing nothing? If they're doing nothing, it means they want to post. They're going to change something and then resubmit it. Otherwise, they're going to post. So if they have posted, right? So let's go if form dot is underscore valid. We've seen this before. We just want to form dot save the guy, right? And then let's throw up a little message because we're merry and, and helpful people, right? And let's say record has been updated. Woohoo! And we just probably want to redirect to the home page, right? Otherwise, let's just show them to the page. So let's come down here and paste this guy in. And instead of add record, this is going to be update record. And we still definitely want to pass in that form, right? Which is this guy else. So if they're authenticated, do all this. Otherwise, let's throw up a message. Let's just copy this guy right here. He must be logged in, redirect him back to the home page. Okay. So now we need this update record.html page. It's easy to forget about that guy, uh, but let's go ahead and save this and head over to our templates, right click new file, file save as update underscore record .html. And again, let's just kind of grab some stuff here. Actually, let's grab all of this stuff. We're probably gonna need it. So ah, we don't even need this. Let's get rid of this action. Let's streamline this stuff. CSRF token form as P, uh, add record. Let's change the button to say update record. Yeah, pretty much everything is gonna be the same. Uh, we have this guy here. We never really closed that div tag, which means we probably didn't over here either in our ad record. That's just bad form. <laughs> it still works, still valid. It's just not good form. So, okay. Uh, update record. That looks good. So now if we head back over to the web page, we need to fix our button here. So this is on the regular record page. So let's go to our record.html. And down here, we created this update record, but we need to pass the customer underscore record dot ID. So we know which one to update, right? Obviously. Uh, let's go come back over here, hit some reloads. All right. So Mary Smith, here she is. We want to update her. Boom. Here is the form. It's already filled out with Mary Smith stuff, which is awesome. Notice there's no field for ID. We, we don't want to be able to change the ID. That's the primary key. You can change that. And you also don't want to be able to change the created at field because that's no good either. You can add an updated at field if you wanted to. I'll leave that to you. Uh, it's the same principles as the created at field. You would just, you know, tinker around and add it here. But let's change Mary to Mary 2. Update record. Record has been updated. It says Mary 2 Smith. And that seems to have worked. We come back here. We want to change it back. Get rid of that update record. Boom. Record has been updated and we are good to go. I think that's it. I think we are done, right? Has everything you would want to do. We can register. We can log in. We can log out. We can see all the records. We can add a new record. We can. Maybe we want to put a button here that says back. I don't know. We click, we can click on an individual record to view it. We can delete it. We can update it. We can go back. Yeah, let's do that. Add record page very quickly. Uh, da, 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 down here, let's just create another button. And instead of it saying add record, let's have it say back. No, actually, let's go to our record page and let's grab this back guy because it's an actual link, which is easier. And we're just going to copy and paste. All right, save that. Now, when we come back here and hit reload, it says back. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> and we're good to go. We've got the link here to click on the ID. Maybe you want Mary Smith to be clickable as well. Or instead, we could do that. Go to our homepage and 
come up here and let's just grab this link. And like I said, we could easily, just as easily add it to our first name and then close it right here. Save this, head back over here, hit reload. Now the names are clickable instead of the ID. When we click on John Elder, it goes to John Elder. We could, you know, just as easily put another column here that says click here to update. If you wanted to update from this page, we could do that as well. Uh, it's trivial, I'll leave that to you. Uh, I'm going to take this out because I, I think that's kind of ugly. So I'm just going to hit undo a couple of times here. Save this, head back over here, hit reload, and we are good to go. Now, one last thing, let's push all this final code to GitHub so you have the updated code. So to do that, let's go git add period. So git commit dash am, and let's say final project whatever, and then git push to push it up to GitHub. Let me run our server again, just so that it's running in the background. Now, if we come back over here, go to github.com forward slash flat planet. And let's just do it like that. Click on repositories and then Django CRM. The complete final code is here. That's github.com forward slash flat planet forward slash Django dash CRM. So there you can find the totally completed code. If you like this, head over to codemy.com. I have got like over a dozen other Django courses. If you're into Django stuff, basic Django, create a dental website, Django, to-do list app, Django, authentication, a whole course just on authentication, but we pretty much covered everything here. Well, no, we didn't actually. There's more stuff in there that's interesting. Stock market app, flashcard app, a push your code to a Roku app, a weather app, Cryptocurrency, that's kind of outdated. Build an API. Here's a couple of chat GPT courses. For this one, we create a code bot that chat GPT will write code for you and give it to you. It's really cool. This one is just the basic chat bot. So if you're interested in Django, check all those out. Uh, like I said, you can always sign up for membership by clicking on lifetime membership, which is usually $249. If you come over here and type in YouTube 50, you get half off. So you get all of my courses, over 50 courses, and all my future courses at no extra charge for a one-time fee of $125, which is pretty fantastic. Or you could sign up for monthly for 12 bucks a month. You could get individual courses for $49 each, or you could get yearly membership for 99 bucks. But honestly, if you're going to get yearly for 99, you might as well sign up for a uh, total for just 25 bucks more or whatever, 26 bucks more. Uh, that gets you all my future courses. I've got an aggressive course release schedule this year, 2023-24. Uh, so I'm trying to release at least one, if not two new courses every month. And so far we've been able to do that and uh, should be good. So, all right, I think we're gonna call this guy done. Pretty simple app, but all kinds of cool functionality in here. And this is basic CRUD applications, create, read, update, and destroy. So we can create a record, right? We can read a record, yeah? We can update a record. Yeah. And we can delete a record. CRUD. Create, read, update, destroy. If you're interested in all things web development, everything on the internet is a CRUD application. Create, read, update, and destroy. A Facebook post is nothing more than CRUD. You create a Facebook post, you read a Facebook post, sometimes you update a Facebook Facebook post, or sometimes you delete a Facebook post. Everything. Twitter. You can't actually update a Twitter tweet, can you? Yeah. Instagram, everything is just CRUD. And this is how you do CRUD in Django. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and very fun. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Doing over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.